Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to set up your own asset checkout app. If you have Office 365, it should cost you nothing. What's up guys, this is Matt Kahn from Bulb Digital with another video. Today I'm here talking about Power Apps templates, specifically the asset checkout application. I'm gonna show you guys what this app does, how you can deploy it and start customizing it, and a couple tips and tricks to really make it your own and see how far you can take it. Before we dive in, I want to encourage you guys to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. So I want to talk about the requirements to getting this app set up. Really, all you need is your Office 365 license, access to the Power Apps environment, and Excel workbooks in your OneDrive. If you want to check to see if you have access to those things, you can open up the Waffle in Office 365, and you should be able to find Power Apps listed in your Apps list and OneDrive listed near the top. So I've got the app open here, and I want to walk you through basically how it works for an end user at an organization that would be using it. Uh, the app is called Asset Checkout, and you'll see the first thing we land on is the most checked out here. This is useful because if you have a lot of assets or equipment at a business that are always checked out, this is probably the first thing users would maybe want to see. You can kind of cycle through these things based on how often they're checked out or their frequency that users are asking for them. That seems like a pretty cool idea. Um, and you get images of what these objects are pretty easily because they're kind of self-explanatory. Just below that, you'll see that they've grouped all of their assets at an organization into certain filters like monitors or keyboards. So when we click these, users can kind of say, I'm definitely looking for a monitor or a keyboard specifically, and then they see more results further down on what options they have to pick from those filters. Users also have the option to search. Right now you can search for different things if they know they want something wireless. You can pull up a search and get results based off of things that are wireless. And again, all this is customizable. You can build your own filters and add your own assets. And these aren't obviously the only things you can add to the application. You can get pretty creative with some of the things to display here. You see there's also a refinement off to the side that says we want to look at things that are either the most checked out or based off of reviews, which are established for each asset. So this section, this app not only records things that are checked out or things that are popular, but also what people have to say about each of these assets, which can be useful if you're looking for a colleague or somebody who prefers a certain type of keyboard or a certain type of monitor or any other type of asset. They could be recording that within the application and get some more data about that asset. So as a user, if I've kind of honed in right now, I say I want a keyboard and I want to use this wireless one right here. Um, I can actually click this keyboard image right here and now we get to another screen that tells me a little bit more about the wireless keyboard. It has a space for a description that tells you what accessories come with this when you want to rent it from maybe your organization or at least reserve it out. Uh, technical specifications, you can put whatever you guys want in this description field. Um, common problems or pros and cons about using each of this equipment kind of comes to mind for me. Um, they also have a model number and more specific things. But it's also useful because it tells me how many are available or even if they are available to rent out, which is pretty important when I'm looking to get something reserved. Obviously on each page when you're looking to check out an item and you finally landed on that item, you can click the checkout button. That actually updates this form, the same screen, with a place to put my name and my email and how long I want to reserve this item for. I like that they actually give a drop down for months versus days because I might want to use this keyboard for at least three months, maybe a quarter of the year. And once you've put in the required information, it actually gives you the option to reserve it. And now they have actually calculated the date that I need to get it back to the business, which is nice. Click OK, and we're back on the homepage. So whether or not you're on the homepage, you can click right to reviews of certain items that you've pulled up in the search right from the homepage there. Or if you've already landed on an item like this mouse, I can actually click the reviews here and, and see what people have had to say about this, what date they recorded the review, so when they were using it. Um, a description of these and, and basically the star rating that they gave on the asset, which is useful because some of your equipment might be a little bit more aged and people want to comment about that. And some of the newer equipment that comes in might have a lot of praise. So that's most of what this app does. Um, it just lists the reviews, lists the ratings and what's available and how many of each item are available and kind of rolls them up all in a nice neat area just to, for users to get to what they need quickly. So now that we've looked at a demo of this template, we want to show you guys how you can set up your own app and connect it to your own data at home. So starting on the Power Apps home screen, we can go into Create the App. And on the Create page, we can search for templates. This one was the Asset Checkout template. So I'm going to click that. I have the option to pick tablet or phone. I'm just going to do tablet for now. So now we have the template open in the Power Apps and environment. Again, this is just a demo template. It's not actually connected to any backend data. If I actually go up to the view option in the toolbar and click data sources, you'll see that the Power Apps environment kind of suggests that we're using Excel workbooks. That's the intention of the data to be stored for this template. 
Um, but I have no way to really get in and update content in these Excel templates. I can remove them or I can add another data source here. So I can add connections to data sources um, from SharePoint or places like OneDrive um, and import from my own Excel. So to make your own version of this app, we're gonna connect it to Excel files in our OneDrive. Uh, there's a button up at the top by this yellow bar that says make my own app. So when we click that, it says, where do you wanna store your data? Um, we have a couple options like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. In this instance, I wanna keep it in my OneDrive for business account. So I'm gonna click done. As soon as I wanna connect the template to OneDrive, it's actually creating a folder within a Power Apps folder on my OneDrive account, and it's gonna put Excel files in there to store all the data and all the image files that I wanna use for this application. So now that it's actually created some of those backend source files for my Power Apps template, when I go back to see the data sources that are here, I can actually pull those up in the Power Apps environment and I can see now all of the lists that I need for this apps template are contained within my OneDrive. I can refresh those or remove them whenever I need to. So we've already run through this app, but now I wanna show you where the data is actually stored. So we can go to our own OneDrive account where we said we wanted to connect the data. And in my OneDrive account in the base level, I can go to Power Apps folder, which is created as soon as I connect any Power Apps template to my OneDrive account. And it's gonna automatically create a templates folder for templates that I've deployed. And it gives me a brief title of the asset checkout file that I was using. We see that it was created a minute ago. And in this folder, we can see a folder for all the data image files that you guys saw in the application. So all the photos of people that made reviews, all of the photos of the assets that you could check out themselves are all stored just in this one folder, um, nice and neat for you. And we have a data Excel workbook that contains all of the lists that make up this application. So when I go in here, I can see all of the comments. It looks like we landed on the reviews list first. So we can see the product IDs list aligned with the comment sections, who made the comment, and the dates that were created. So here's the product list for each of those assets. They're connected to category IDs. So you can kind of get an indication of how all this data is connected together across these four or five lists that make up the Power Apps template. One of the most important lists that I see in this data are the assets list, which is actually the reservations that are made. So when you saw me click that reservation, it looks like it records the email of the person that was using the app template, the name, and how long they've basically reserved each asset. So you can start to get an indication of how to manage this data on the back end and start keeping track of who has access to what or who has made reservations for what. So now that you've seen the app working, if you wanna use it, you might be thinking, how do I put my own content in here? We can go into the back end Excel database and simply change a lot of the names in here. Say we have a better notebook we wanna use and let's update and say we have 10 of them at your organization and maybe we use gray laptops instead of black ones. All you have to do is update the rows in here that are connected to this app. You'll see the Excel database is saving in your OneDrive. And we can go back to the Power Apps here, click our data sources. We made these changes in the products list of the Excel workbook, so we can find that in our OneDrive here in the data sources and just refresh those. The reason I have to refresh the data here is because I'm making changes to the app while I have it open. And somebody's using the app, that data is already gonna be updated while they're using it. So as you can see, we refreshed the data and now we have a new title and a couple more are left in stock and the color has been changed on here. And you can do this for the reviews for each of the items, the categories that you wanna add to this thing, um, all sorts of different customizations can be made. Now that we know how the app works and we've seen how we can customize it with your own data, let's talk about some improvement ideas of where we can take this app further. The first thing I wanna talk about is Excel. We've seen that we've connected this app to an Excel document on our OneDrive. We probably don't think that's the best solution um, your OneDrive is central only to you and we wanna probably put the storage of this data in a shared space where a couple people or a team could manage this content. Clicking back into data sources, you could explore some options of how other ways you could connect the ultimate source of data for this application. We've seen things like Microsoft Forms, uh, SharePoint lists, um, and a lot of those are a little bit more useful because Excel is pretty primitive. You have to go in and make those changes and refresh the data. You might not have to do that for some of these other connections. I particularly don't like the way that we have to update the data here from this Excel document because it creates a, a new version of that Excel document and preloads all that data. Um, if you wanna take this to the next level, I would suggest connecting it to a SharePoint list um, and share it with people who are managing this application so that you can make those changes and get some benefits from using SharePoint like version history and, and how you've updated a lot of these customizations for your app. Another improvement that I think we could add to this application is that when these users make these reservations, they might not remember to bring this equipment back. So 
deploying something like Power Automate to integrate with this application and send email alerts um, to remind people to bring their equipment back might resolve that area or that issue. Another improvement I think we could add to this is adding some sort of an admin dashboard screen so that you can see all of the equipment that you have, whether it's checked out or not. An admin dashboard like that could help you keep track of what's checked out to whom and what else you need to order. So hopefully this walkthrough is helpful. We just wanted to show you how you could get an asset checkout template loaded at your company and connect it to some data and start some ideas going of how you could take it further and customize it for your own use. So if you have more questions about this, you can leave those in the comments below. We also do office hours every month. You should definitely check us out there. And we have a learning center on our website that's also linked in the description. By the way, I'm wearing a pretty cool shirt today. If you guys like these, they're available on our website. Link in the description below. Thanks for checking this video, guys. My name is Matt, and I'll see you in the next one.